God bless you. Welcome back to the triage room, Jehovah Rapha, where sin is the sickness and Christ is the cure. As a believer, one of my biggest fears or, or enduring nightmares is being left behind after the rapture. In fact, when I was a boy, I actually had a dream um, or a nightmare that somehow I had missed the rapture. Um, I actually remember waking up and searching the house for my mom at the time, who was a believer, and um, finding that she was still in bed. And I was like, thank God, you know, I haven't missed the rapture. But it's, as I said, an enduring uh, nightmare or one of the biggest fear of mine. And I think every believer um, should have that fear or should have that concern that they want to be part of the rapture they don't want to miss it um i don't think it's abnormal to feel that way i think it's a rather healthy uh thing to have it's like an inner guide to keep me to keep you focused but i know from scripture um that the coming or the return of the lord um, is shrouded in in, in mystery um, in terms of the time um, in terms of the day the month the year uh, the season um, the Bible is not um, definitive as to when the Lord shall return it gives a sign we know signs of the times and everything else uh, wars and rumors of wars and all these things we'll see happening which are happening now um, but these things are just pointers as it were it's not the the end so as Christians um, or believers, we ought always to be uh, ready, okay? Um, the Bible keeps us on our toes uh, because it's so easy to be caught up in life um, or the pleasures of life and not be uh, what they call rapture ready because we feel that God somehow wouldn't come right now. Um, too much is happening in the world. Um, I live a very busy life. Why would God, God come in the midst of my busy life uh, and spoil my plans, as it were? Um, but God does not work to our time. You know, he doesn't work to our time. But he has um, been loving enough, you know, to give us signs and pointers and preachers and teachers, you know, to perpetually warn us that he is coming soon. So it's for us always to be uh, in a state of preparedness, you know, always be ready for his return. The Bible says in 1 Peter 3 verse 10, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. The Bible says, uh, thief in the night. Um, it refers to the unknown. Um, the when you say thief, you know, if you knew the thief was coming, you prepare for the thief, right? So you put uh, certain safeguards in place. If it was a house, you perhaps have burglar alarms. Um, some places in the world have bars on the windows. You know, make sure that the doors are locked, windows are locked. You know, that your family is secured inside. And it's the same principle um, that First Peter. Uh, 3 verse 10 is saying that because he's going to come as a thief in the night always be ready always be ready you know i mentioned earlier always be rapture ready make sure that you you're 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 you are in right standing with god at all times you know um always seek to be like jesus as it were you know um, always pray for sins to be forgiven, sincerely to be forgiven, because you don't know when Christ shall return. Um, if you don't know Christ as Savior, at the end of this video, you know, I'll lead you into the sinner's prayer. And if you genuinely want to know Christ as Savior, please follow my lead. Um, Matthew 24, verse 35 says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of the day, or of that day and hour knoweth no man, as I've said before. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. 
Then it goes on in Matthew 24, verse 37, down to uh, 41. It says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man shall be. For as in the days they were uh, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So it gives us a, an example. It says, look back upon the days of Noah. People were, were working, getting married, merrymaking. And while all this was happening, Noah was building the ark. While they were just living their lives, you know, God was about to send a, a catastrophic flood that will destroy the earth as we knew it then. And the Bible is saying, as in the days of Noah, you know, right now we just get along with our lives, as I said earlier. You know, people just busy being busy, not being mindful of, of, of eternal things, just focusing on, on earthly things, earthly matters, paying our bills, you know, trying to get our children through school, you know, thinking of that next holiday, you know, thinking about what to buy next on Amazon. You know, you know what I'm saying? We're just, just getting by, just living, right? And the Bible is saying, you know, in Matthew 24, if you have time to read that whole chapter, don't be so mindful of earthly things, you know. Place or put your mind also in on eternal things because Christ is and will return very soon. He goes on in verse 40 of Matthew 24. Then shall two be in a field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Um, all the scriptures say two will be in a bed, one taken and the other left. But you get the picture, right? So if a husband is saved and the wife's not saved, the husband will be taken and the wife left. If the children are saved and the uh, mom and dad are not saved, Children will be taken and mom and dad left behind. In a place of work, you know, we have um, multinational, multicultural, uh, multi-faith um, people. And it's saying those who truly believe in Christ as a son of God will be taken and the others left behind. Okay. Um, the Bible goes on. Because of, of, of this, those who are taken, obviously, will who are spirited away, will have eternal joy. And those who are left behind... Um, utter sorrow, <laughs> utter sorrow, utter pain, utter grief. In fact, Matthew 24 verse 51 says, There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, on hearing what I've just said, who would want to be left behind after the rapture? Who? Um, whether you're a Christian or, 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 or someone who's sitting on the fence, you know, in terms of your belief in, in Christ as Savior. Who would want to be left behind? If your answer is not me, then why not get saved? What are you waiting for? If you don't know the time, the hour, the month, the year, the season, why are you gambling with your life? All right, say Christ doesn't uh, return in the next 50 years, you know, you can say, oh, that's that's close but death can catch you you know um, after death comes the judgment so you have these two impending dooms I call them death or the rapture either way you will be caught up in either or either you know so why not be rapture ready why not be ready for death <laughs> you know um, why leave it to the last moment who would want to miss out on the rapture? Because after the rapture, you know, um, comes the great tribulation. Three and a half years where God will send two witnesses um, to actually speak to the world, you know, call down plagues upon the world, those who are left behind. During that time, there will be a great falling away. Naturally, there will be a great falling away if the church is being spirited away from the earth then anyone who still claims to be a christian will be castigated and interrogated and 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 imprisoned you know terrorized and you know all manner of things will be done 
to them. We call them the tribulation saints. Um, I don't want to be a tribulation saint, by the way, you know. Um, so you'll have three and a half years of that happening, you know. Um, and then another three and a half years when Satan will, will be released from his prison, as it were, to wreak terror upon the earth, the great abomination and desolation as spoken in by the prophets. You know, during that time, um, men, women, children, the inhabitants of the earth will be forced to take on what we call the mark of the beast. Um, if you read Revelation 13, 15 through to 18. Let me read some of this actually. Um, Revelation 13, 15 through to 18 says, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast uh, who should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, uh, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. The number uh, is six hundred three score and six 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 six. So, during the period of the great tribulation, and I may not have given you uh, chronologically what would happen during that period of time, but in those seven years, you know, there'll be terror beyond terror, you know. Um, Persecution beyond persecution, you know, um, civil unrest beyond civil unrest. Everything you know to be bad now will be magnified many, many times over during that period of great tribulation. Hence the reason why it's called the period of great tribulation. And anyone who takes on uh, the mark of the beast, their souls will be lost for eternity. I don't want to be around then. And I'm sure you don't want to be around then. So why not prepare yourself to be raptured? Now, I'm not one of them that believe in, uh, I think they call it post-tribulation rapture. I'm all about a pre-tribulation rapture. There are those who believe the church was raptured during the tribulation. But I think that's false teaching. Um, Christ's uh, second return to the earth is during the time of or just around the time of the tribulation but that's when christ comes back to as it were to, to to judge you know the quick and the dead in revelation 20 i believe the the white throne judgment but when christ comes back to to carry the church away with him he only comes in the cloud he doesn't set foot upon the earth um, but as i said there are greater theologians than me out there but i believe in pre-tribulation rapture not post i believe the church will be taken away before god pours out his wrath upon the earth either way who would want to miss out on the rapture and be caught up in the great tribulation i don't see anyone out there putting their hands up say yes i would love to be part of the great tribulation even the worst of the worst or the baddest of the baddest would say nah i don't want to be around for that and if you don't want to be around for that the only way to escape is to accept Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. The Bible says in Matthew 24, 42, Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doeth come. Watch. How do you watch? He's not saying get your, uh, your telescope out and point it to the stars and look to the heavens for the coming of the Lord. No, 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 no. He's not asking you to be an astronomer, you know. He's saying, watch in a sense of make sure you are right with God. Your soul is in right standing with God. You're righteous before God. And the only way you can be righteous before God is to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. With the mouth, confession is made with the heart, one believes. So he's asking you to accept Christ as Savior. That's the only way you can watch, be ready. So you don't miss out or get caught up in the great tribulation may god bless you may god keep you until next time dear viewer if you've been challenged by this message and would like to accept christ as your lord and savior please pray this prayer with me 
Dear Jesus, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Come into my heart and forgive me of all my sins. In Jesus' name, Amen. Congratulations, you've been born again. My advice to you would be to find a Bible-believing fellowship to continue your walk with God. May God bless you. May God keep you. Until next time.